Levi, what's good, man? Glad to have you on the Turning Point Moment. Yeah, thanks much. Let's talk this out. It's been a minute since I've seen you. I would say, what, was it that agenda? Last time I saw you? I think it was at the barracks um, in 2018. Yeah, it's been a while. What's new with you? A lot. I uh, I spent most all of last, uh, or I guess I'll call it the last 14 or 15 months traveling, m mobile, working. So I, uh, I was able to reset a lot of things by not having a normal any longer. It's the first time in my life where Granted, every day is a bit different, but this was the first time that I didn't go to sleep in the same place for a very long period of time. I didn't see the same people. I didn't eat the same places uh, all for a long period of time. So, you know, when you don't have the things that you're used to having, you tend to possibly appreciate them more or maybe the opposite. And uh, it allows, I, I notice, for a much more open mind space because things are constantly changing. And uh, that's helped me do a lot of evaluating and um, in turn growth in my life. Maestro knows. How'd that, how'd that come about? I guess in short, I just thought it was 2009 and... Uh, I was interested in music videos. I was kind of interested in reality TV. My background came from, from filming skateboarding and I wanted to put together sort of a, a variety day in the life-ish kind of show. And it made the most sense for me to film it myself. So the design of um, old skate videos when they used to, the filmer would turn the camera on them and kind of big up, you know, his his homie or, or sort of claim the trick, you know. I understood that POV and how it could work. And this was a couple of years before the selfie. So now it's very obvious and common. Though at the time, I just thought, wow, I guess I could just make an entire video filming myself and then another person as well. So. That was it really. I just love Los Angeles a lot. I wanted to show it off. I wanted to show a lot of the cool people and places that were there. And at the same time, try to, I guess, gain my own recognition for my taste and sort of my mind. I, I really see it as a, a journalistic type of uh, video making where you're sharing your opinion and your take on how you see something. Yeah, because I remember watching that one where you're like in the basketball court, like in Yeezys. I was like, man, who's this kid? And then I saw another one with like Jeff Rowley. And I saw another one with P-Rod and TK. I'm like, what the? And then I just kept seeing more and more and more. And I'm just like, in my mind, I'm like, Did he just was like born with this phone book of people and just made these videos. Because I was tripping on all the guests you had. And I was like, wow, he's like ahead of his time before like, vlogging you want to say now that everybody's doing you know you were like a late night on the go host <laughs> well thank you man it's uh it's really cool to uh, the first part is that it's it's rad to have a space that you can uh, push through all of your interests because w when you say it that way kind of clues in on the eclectic value of of someone's interest you know i was very heavily interested and influenced by skateboarding um though the other type of people that i knew probably really didn't know much about skateboarding at all and i loved being able to um bounce in and out of those spaces because when i started making those videos i was putting them out each week and it was very fun that one week I would come with um, with one that was Jeff Rowley and then another one it would be Miguel. And those are two things that, at least at the time, you know, things have changed now and stuff rolls into each other a lot more often, which I think is awesome. Um, 
though at the time it was quite different because you would have someone who might have been watching and then the next time I come with someone that they wouldn't be interested in at all so um that's uh that was a part of the magic i think also in in, in those early internet days because mostly the videos were being seen by um people who visited blogs you had people who were checking out certain sneaker blogs um fashion culture esque blogs music blogs and so uh yeah it, it kind of circulated in such different realms whereas now pretty much people are just seeing you if if they follow you i guess you know do you feel ever like, damn, I want to go back and do one or like, because I've seen you had a couple for a while. You did a lot of different ones. And then like, it just, I didn't see it for a minute. Like, and I don't know if you like change a pace of like maybe the, ep- the episodes or just like other things came into your life that you were like, all right, well, I'm going to just put this on hold. I think a little bit of both. Um, it was definitely a really heavy workload to keep up to make a video every week that feels let's say well made well thought out or just really effort put in is a a lot of work even if you're not doing anything else but then the other difficulty really came with the idea of people's availability um you know uh, so many people who are doing cool things are really busy and then now that social is so open, I think that when I began, it used to be more of a privilege. If I sort of asked someone to make a story about them, they were excited because it wasn't just something that you could do so easily. So to be featured in a way that kind of told your story or what you were up to. And I also only always kept things positive so this was basically like a celebration of the person that i was um, showcasing so as that became a lot more difficult to kind of get time with people i started feeling like it was a chore and still to this day i make a video i think i always will because it really is just kind of a diary or a journal for for myself and i love looking back at them because i it makes me laugh in a lot of ways and I still can kind of learn things from it. So that's sort of why the consistency went away. And um, yeah, the digital age and landscape has just changed so dramatically as well for uh, one of my favorite elements of the videos was the music. I used anything under the sun that I enjoyed and now is a big part of its eclecticness as well. It's, you would have people who were just feeling it so tough when I came with certain songs that they forgot about or maybe that they hadn't heard or whatever. And then for a long time, that was difficult to figure out how to, how to be able to use stuff because I never monetized any of my videos, mm. but most of YouTube did. So if you ever tried to use something that you didn't have the rights to, then it would get pulled down. And that's why I didn't join YouTube until about two years ago. So that was also felt like, damn, it's just another way to make it a little harder for me to do what I was doing. Did you feel like the pace of it being busy for you, you didn't feel like you needed, you shouldn't have like hired a team of people, maybe like one camera guy, an editor, and just oversee stuff and maybe like utilize the relationships you have with musicians and be like, yo, do you guys want to orchestrate these next 10 episodes off your music? Like, was that ever a thought? Yeah, there were, there were many different thoughts. Um, similar idea of how I could scale it or sort of make it easier for myself. And I think the thing was it was so personalized that it would be really difficult to kind of keep the same magic even while filming because so many of the the spots i was in you just couldn't you couldn't roll heavy i mean there's moments like i can't think of too many off the top of my head but one for sure where i was making a video with kevin love and we were all-star weekend i think it was in orlando and 2012 or 13 or something and there was a moment where I got on the bus with him and the only people on that bus was the entire all-star squad and the driver there was no agents there was no assistance there was no nothing 
I don't even know how that happened. But I remember I was sitting there and it's it's Westbrook, Low Marcus Aldridge, Blake, Kevin Love and me and I'm just like zooming the camera around like this and we're all having a conversation. I just thought, yeah, there's so many moments like this where I became uh, personal enough or I already was with my friends that that was really catching the magic. And, and in a way that's long gone now because now that's not surprising to see because you can just get it straight off of Instagram stories by following any one of these people, you know? Do you have a favorite skate video of all time and why? Probably, but my, my mind is escaping me with that. I haven't watched in, in so many years. Um, I can definitely say though that all the all the trans world videos from I would say ninety nine to oh eight oh nine were just that was what you looked forward to every year. You know, I mean, Ty was uh, Ty and John Holland uh, were just man, it was too good just too good but the, everything about it too they were so well crafted and had their own character and uh the talent also right like there weren't a lot of videos before unless it was 411 or i mean digital was doing stuff as well but there weren't a lot of videos that would have that amalgamation of of talent uh mm -hmm. you know where you would have someone who like just rode bowls maybe was gonna have a part and then some super street and some kid and that was always really cool to me more so over than a team video but yeah that's that is a great question dude i don't remember like if i looked through a list of titles i would totally be able to pull it out but I think it was the ones kind of early on um, when maybe I started getting uh, little flows or sponsors and stuff where I really became more into it. So probably In Bloom or Good choice. or IE, Transform, Modus Operandi, all those ones struck me in a crazy way. Good choice. Those are definitely good choices right there. And then those couple that girl got off, you know, with the, yeah, right, was just... That's more of like of a proper, you know, movie. There's it's such more cinematic. But you know something is super good when you even like the skits. Yep. <laughs> Cause uh the chocolate one also was super crazy, huh? Tour where it was, was like it was hot chocolate tour. I think they did the interviews or which one, like the older one. The one where is I wasn't it a chocolate video, but the girl riders also had parts? Well, was it the chocolate tour or was one with like Keenan and Gino and like they were all like that is what it was called huh? the, yeah, chocolate the chocolate tour, tour. Mike but Garth it wasn't the like, tour nah they, they like well, which one are you talking about the more recent one or are you talking about like the no. back like in like not 99 maybe yeah, right around there right it's yeah like, so it was the one with like Richard Mulder and like yeah, yeah, yeah that one that chocolate one was sick chocolate tour true yeah that was and Costin comes flying out the, the old people house in the wheelchair right? yep yep that's the one yeah I miss I miss good production videos like that and waiting for videos. Video parts are cool, but I feel like videos, a whole production with the team, there's like personality, yeah. it's like it's all there. Yeah. That was such a big influencer for me for music as well, man. What keeps you busy nowadays like work-wise or what you have going on? Yeah, I'm fully making videos last year um I did two different series with Adidas, uh, which were both stellar. I have a great time working together with them. And then I also shot two behind the scenes EPK packages for feature films. One was called Queen and Slim that came out November last year. Yep. And then the other one is coming out this year, I think August or September. And I don't know the name of it because it was a working title, but it's the story, uh, kind of the, the uh, later life story of Fred Hampton, who was the chairman of the Black Panther Party of Illinois. So yeah, now and then I, I do some different things production wise. When I get calls from people who are doing something, 
and then I'm still doing my own stuff kind of in front of the camera and behind and then I've, I've kind of been working towards um, building a new project that I believe doesn't exist in, in exactly this form so uh, I want to build that out and see if it's what I think it could be because moving forward I'm, I'm excited about the streaming services I think that that's gonna bring we have to come up with a new word for content you know because you hear it so much it yeah. sounds it sounds like it sucks but I think that's gonna really bring it to a lovely place because there should be these spaces where things are funded and made with lots of effort lots of love and then they get to sit up on the platform i i do like the design of traditional media and how you sort of have to get believed in to get funded to then be accepted and then you're sort of hung on the from the rafters to be able to make something really good and you know even with the internet and being able for everyone to see you well now it's a lot clearer too to understand that the other side of that is everyone's out there so it's also that much harder and a lot of people who are getting recognized and getting seen are getting it by accident and there's nothing wrong with that per se however there it does it does make it a bit more difficult to then build something from that because if all of a sudden you just got a lot of attention and you weren't prepared to get it, you might not really know where to go next. And, and that's a difficult thing when you're trying to build a career or possibly a product, a brand, etc. So I am I'm going to move forward in a way where I'm building more of a, of a, a, a castle, I guess could be a, an idea to where I have to lay a bunch of groundwork, a lot of structure, and, and I'm doing every piece that I'm adding, I'm doing it with one final goal in mind, as opposed to the way that many influential people are creating today, which is they're creating for tomorrow. Yeah. Or maybe next week. And that's the thing is that to be relevant, you typically need to make more. And you need to make it now. Yeah, constantly. Which I still don't find anything wrong with either. However, if you're just making it from X, Y, and Z places, and it's a total variety madness, then what do you have to show for it at the end? People put videos up on YouTube, and I understand that you can monetize it, and that seems great or whatnot. Though, if you have 300 videos or 600 posts on Instagram and let's say that you got paid for every single one mm -hmm. when once you have gotten paid then what so I realized this issue because I made I don't know like a hundred or so episodes of my show and I earned a money off of that and I earned recognition and sometimes people talk to me about them still or they want to go watch them but Viacom's not going to come over to me and ask to purchase them because why they're all different durations the sound is not that good it's not consistent but now it's been long enough that they're they're all not even the same picture quality because I was progressing in cameras yep and they're about totally different things People who invest in things want to know what something is. If you go to a company asking for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, they're not going to give it to you unless they have a definitive understanding of what you're going to be making with it yep. and then believe in it. So I realized that my time was more spent in the moment with what I had done in the past. And that's a big takeaway that that I'm going to be able to utilize moving forward. And I wish I would have thought of it sooner. But at the same time, I don't really know. 
this could just be my idea of what should work now, what could work now. It might not. I will not know until I go do it. So when do you think we'll see this come together or come out? <laughs> yeah, I don't know because uh, it requires me being outside. So at the moment, I can't uh, really be in it. Though I also had this idea two or three years ago and I had not acted on it because I sort of had things coming up that kept me busy. Mm -hmm. And also a little bit of me was scared of the execution. In my mind, I see exactly what this thing is. So sometimes it can be difficult to make choices or work towards it because I've already created it the perfect way in my head. Yeah. And that's pretty unlike me. I usually don't have that difficulty. But with this one, I don't know. Uh, I've had a little struggle feeling that. But uh, I intend once this period of time is over uh, to begin it. And it will. I will do it in a variety of cities. And then I, yeah could be by end of the year i get it up or maybe i just build and build and build and then i put it out once i feel i have uh the amount of it that i would like because that's another thing i think that it could be a good plan uh if the things that you're making are timeless to to pre-stack them you know so that you're sitting on stuff to be able to disperse it at your own leisure as opposed to feeling like Okay, I just put one up. Now I have to go make another one. What drives you to keep going? I think that the number one thing I shoot for these days is I want to make it exactly like me. There's just so much out there now that someone can look at you for four seconds and categorize you. And say, oh, that's that. Like, people look at me if I'm out in the street filming myself or maybe my video pops up in a feed. They could look at me and just immediately think, oh, he's a vlogger. And uh, and then, you know, that would be true because that is their lens of seeing me. So I, I don't believe in identity any longer. I think that we are changing so often that you cannot categorize someone because what you're categorizing them by is the behavior that you've seen in the past or of the present moment. But you do not know what is coming next. I feel that what I offer through my videos, specifically the, the actual words that I'm communicating and maybe how it looks and then what those words are also paralleled with I don't feel that you could get something similar to me or similar to what I'm offering in one piece of product anywhere else. And that makes me very fulfilled because then I feel worthy of sharing it. And I only make things for myself. I don't make them for other people. And I hope that I always do that because that to me is what creativity should be. When you make things for other people, you're then a company. And there's nothing wrong with that. Though I think there is a very definitive line there of creativity for the arts and creativity for, let's say, for trade. So that's pretty much it. I'm influenced by the idea and I am motivated by the idea of making a mark that I don't believe anyone else could. And I think I have achieved that previously, and I just hope to continually do so. That was heavy. Nah, it's, that's dope, man. That's good to hear that you're doing good and, you know, I got to catch up with you and see where your head's at during these times. Like, how do you stay actually busy at this moment? Like, during these quarantine times and whoever knows how long until we can go outside. Like, how do you stay busy and, like, work-wise and even mentally yeah i'm having difficulty because um i find the computer and the telephone a, a larger distraction for me than um than uh, productivity source 
though that is my own issue and I'm trying to overcome it uh, because I feel that my life would be significantly enhanced if I could use these things as tools as opposed to finding them using me. Uh, I should be able to do so really well because, you know, you edit on the computer. So this time really should be doing me a lot of good. And uh, I'm reading a book right now called How to Break Up With Your Phone that I've had in my possession for almost one year and I finally got into it. I'm not a I'm not a reader, so um, it was not exciting to me to do so, though I'm about halfway through it now and I'm quite excited because I do realize how deeply addicted I am to my phone and social media and I know that I do not want to be. So I'm hoping that I'm going to find a solution and beat that beast while um, in this uh, time period. And then um, the other stuff is really just about a constant progression of self-discipline and figuring out any little ways that feel more effective in my day-to-day life. So that video you made where you skated, where'd you skate from? Was it, uh, was it LA to San Diego? Yeah, I started out at um, El Segundo, right where the planes fly out of LAX, and then I uh, ended up at the Carlsbad Boardwalk. Was that your idea to do that, or somebody made it better? Like, yo, that was I watched that video and I was like, he must be tired. Yeah, yeah, it was because um, I lived in Carlsbad years ago, and um, I just had a. a a really fervent love for San Diego growing up because that's where I um, saw my first X Games was exposed to skateboarding for the first time. That's what I got the idea to buy a skateboard and start. And then the history is so rich there. And really the history between San Diego and Los Angeles, I feel those are the two richest histories of skateboarding those two cities. But then in Southern California, it's just not fair because everywhere in between there, all of the cities in between that make up San Diego County, Orange County, Los Angeles County, it's just the mecca of of skateboarding, at least as far as spots go, for sure. And um, I always thought it'd be very fun to to actually track that ground by foot and um, in a perfect world i would have done it a lot more in depth probably you know made a little mini documentary or short film type thing out of it because you could just tell so many stories that way i thought it would be really cool to meet up with certain guys along the way and and do it really right but it was one of those things where i probably i believe i wanted to do it for seven years i think i was trying to loosely pitching it since like 2012 and I just never got around to it. And then um, Adidas was really down to let me um, roll it. So I thought, hey, this is going to be a pretty stripped down version, but I'm going to be able to do it. And to me, the biggest uh, the biggest goal out of it now is to physically go that distance and because um, it's 100 miles. And so I, I averaged about 20 a day. And um, I was pushing you know, pushing right foot, pushing left foot. And even that, just even being able to keep it even and stuff, it was tremendously uh, difficult. And I don't skateboard every day anymore, not for a long time. So in my head, because I can still do tricks and and I can still, you know, be who I once was on a skateboard, I thought it it wasn't really going to be that crazy, but I I exhausted myself in in a tremendous way. And I ended up getting strep throat after I just I put my body to the ringer and um yeah five days in a row uh but it was incredible for sure I, I have a super special feeling at the end because I just can't imagine that many people have ever done that mm-hmm. and um I mean it feels like a really great homage but and then also Ty Evans came and joined me and uh took some such amazing shots with the with the van and uh and now it's you know i I love being able to draw those circles and uh ty has such a wonderful mind as well i love that he really has thought outside of the box for so long 
and he's able as core and OG of a skateboarder and devotee of skateboard culture as he is, he also sees such a bigger picture in so many different directions. So I feel super um, fortunate that he he's was so on in my corner uh, about it and, and came and hooked me up like that. Damn, man. That was definitely a moment in time in history. I think, I don't say do it again, but I feel like maybe make it on a bigger scale, like you said, like docu-style for sure next time because yeah. the world needs to see that. Instagram doesn't, it does, it does its justice, but it doesn't do it, like you said, the justice that we all wanted to see, like actually properly like, wake, you know, the whole shit yeah. being told, you sitting down interviewing, like, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a way, that was that was really the, the skin and bones because it was just a very much pedestrian, straight up. I, I mean, I, there was an ollie in there. I ollied over a, a fire hydrant. But other than that, it was just straight pushing, you know? And it, and it was cool, too, because there's not a lot of things you see like that where um, the, you, that is the beauty that you're watching. It's just the poetry and motion of, of pushing on a skateboard. There's really not many other things like that as well, you know? That was dope, bro. Thanks, bro. Levi, thank you, bro. I really appreciate you taking the time during these times. Um, hopefully, we get to skate and kick it soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. Much love. Peace.